Hey, this is um, Zeddy, and uh, here is a deck I just bought. You saw, probably saw the the teaser clip I probably put right in the beginning of me finding this at a Goodwill, which is actually a surprise uh, to see because typically you don't see these things anymore uh, on on at Goodwill, uh, especially not the really vintage stuff like this. Uh, this is a 1974 Super Scope CD301. And it is a stereo deck, two head. There's not even a pause button. And uh, all the lights seems to work except for the chrome dioxide. Maybe it's just not engaging. Uh, looks like the lights do work. Never mind. Maybe it's just not engaging. I need to deoxys, deoxit this thing. Um, it's a pretty straightforward deck from the 70s. Um, left and right record level. And also basically automatic level con uh, control. So you don't have to worry about these. Although, don't know how well that actually works. So probably not going to rely on that. Most people don't. Tape counter. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but there is no pause button on here. Just your typical transport and record. Um, left and right uh, jacks for your microphone. Uh, three and a half, uh, I guess these are three and a half inch plugs, basically the same as what you would use on your headphone jacks or your headphone connectors. I'm trying to show you. But of course, it's going to be mono each. Okay. And the headphones is uh, a quarter inch, so I would need an adapter if I needed to use it on some of these headphones. And I did test it out. It sounds pretty good. Again, super basic. Um, I have these plugged into my um, Bluetooth speakers auxiliary jack. This is upside down, I know. But... You know, your typical left and right input, output RCA. It's also got the DIN jack for playback and record, um, which is an old, older German standard, I believe. Um, it does take 120 volts AC. Supposedly, it takes up to 11 watts. And really, there's nothing on the bottom, not much anyways. Serial number, made in Taiwan. <laughs> Designed in USA though. Um, I was told that Superscope is connected to two different companies actually and I don't recall what the connection was. I do know that somebody told me that it was a value labeled version of the Marantz brand. And then later they also um, helped Sony bring in their products here. You know, they were selling it under the Superscope name. And so that reminds me of this cassette right here. I remember showing it off to you guys before. You can check out the other video of um, me showing off some of the vintage cassettes that I owned. And this is interesting because I remember making a comment about the Superscope logo. You know, this is distributed by Superscope. So they were a distribution for Sony products, I guess. And there it is right there. So that was a kind of a cool throwback, a good um, connection to some audio history. I just wasn't expecting to find something like this at Goodwill anymore because, you know, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's older and um, at the same time, you don't see cassette decks and cassette tapes uh, there anymore. Uh, you can find them on eBay for like really expensive nowadays, so... But this I actually got for $4. 
and surprisingly it still works the belts still work um it's just you know i'm thinking it's the idler wheel that needs to be a little conditioned and then after that and of course i'm sure with with electronics as old as this it will require uh capacitors to be replaced but unfortunately i'm not all that qualified to do that myself um this is a considered a relatively low end, you know, desktop cassette deck. So um, probably not worth, you know, getting it serviced by a professional. Um, so I might just get it good enough to, to work, like, you know, recondition the belts, recondition the rubbers, anything that's rubber based. Um, pinch rollers, by the way, seems good enough. Yeah, I don't know if I can get close enough. So let's see if I can actually bring it there. And then let me see if I can get there and zoom in. Yeah, but I'm feeling it and the rubber feels, you know, I'm putting my finger on it and it feels really grippy feels really nice and smooth. Not smooth as in glazed smooth. I mean, you know, there's still some texture to it, but it's, how do I put it? It's nice and round. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have any weird bumps or dents. So it does seem pretty good. So I just got it home and cleaned it up and got a closer look and um, it looks like uh, everything seems to be working. I plugged it into my Bluetooth speaker and the auxiliary port. I also have it plugged into my headset. It can play with the door open. Fast forward works, although a little slow. Rewind seems to struggle. <laughs> and play seems to work. Speed seems to be correct. Fast forward a little bit more. If, it, if I leave it and, you know, stop like this and just hit play, it does, you can hear that it takes a little bit to speed up, but it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. 